Hello again and welcome. I'm planning on releasing a new version of software for the Light VNA and of course that also supports the V2 Plus 4. I was attempting to run some tests on a 1 gigabit Ethernet connection. One of the things that I was looking at was some Cat5e cable. Of course this twisted pair of cable is 100 ohms so to look at that with the VNA I was using a Balan. This one was made by National Semiconductor. The part on here is from Mini Circuits. This is a TC1-1-13M. This part's rated for 4.5 meg to 3 gigahertz. It's set up as a current ballon. It originally had two resistors on here for termination and it was AC coupled. I replaced the two blocking capacitors with shorts and the termination resistors were removed. Then I just have a couple of pieces of coax attached to the 100 ohm side. So you have a small connector attached to the end of that and of course this is used to plug into the separate pairs. To look at lower frequencies I made a second ballon. This one is using an ADT2-1T. Here I have my standards. So you have a 50 ohm load, a 100 ohm load, a short and an open. This goes across each of the four pairs. And you can see I have a male and a female breakout connector. One of the things I was attempting to do was look at the length mismatch between the four different pairs. So to make this measurement I made a few changes to my software. Let me just show you how this works now. Let's go ahead and we'll turn on our light VNA. And we'll go ahead and select link. And then we'll go ahead and select sweep. You'll notice that the font here has changed. This is actually the most recent version of the firmware for the light VNA. Up till this point I've been using an unreleased version of firmware from Dislord. It was version 1.2.09 underscore low underscore AGC. That version of firmware addressed some issues with the AGC when working at lower frequencies. It appears this latest version of firmware has those changes included with it. So the firmware that's currently loaded into this is version 220830.bin. So I'm going to change our stop frequency here to 9.3 gigahertz. And then we'll switch to TDR mode. Here we have a phase trimmer. This is produced by Sage. We'll be using this to set the length of the load. Of course the software has always had two markers available. You could select show markers. And you can see there's one here and then one at the start. Currently we are in meters. So the distance between these two markers right now is 1.5 meters. What we'll do is just turn off the impulse. And let's zoom into this vertically. Again, the system isn't calibrated, but here we can see I have a short section of coax. And then we have our phase trimmer over here. And again, these are both roughly 50 ohms. To the right of the show markers, you can see we have a new selector called MAN marker. This stands for manual markers. We can go ahead and turn that on. What that allows us to do now is manually change the position of that marker. Normally, it's looking for the peak. It also changes which waveform it's tracking. Here it's tracking our step. If we go ahead and select impulse, you can see now the cursor is tracking the impulse waveform. Let's just go back to step. And again, let's zoom into this vertically. So another feature that I've added is multiple memories. So if we go to the front panel, you can see I support two different memories. And you can see I also support two memories with the Bode plot. With the TDR mode, I support an unlimited number of memory storages. The way we store the waveform to memory is we just select MEM. So you can see it automatically indexes to the next memory location. Now if I select STEP, this will show the current waveform being collected as well as our first memory location. We can go ahead and deselect STEP and here's our first memory location. Now let's go ahead and we'll adjust our trimmer a little bit. And we'll just select memory again. And let's go ahead and put a few more turns on. And again we can hit mem. Do another turn or two. And select mem. Looks like we've hit our stop point. Again we'll select memory. And now let's go ahead and select step. You can see we've stored five different memories. Now what we can do is zoom into this across the horizontal axes.
we'll go ahead and select the cursor center button you can see that brings the two cursors to the center of the screen now what we can do is manually move these we'll position these somewhere up where the slope is rapidly changing so you can see we basically added 83.4 millimeters of length to our coax again if we auto scale the X so again let's go ahead and select the impulse wave you can see this disables all the step waves and it shows us all the memories for the impulse along with the current impulse waveform again we can disable the auto scale for the horizontal and let's just zoom into this a little bit and again here we have our different memories that we've stored and of course the live is part of that just go ahead and adjust this trimmer back down a little bit and of course you can change the line style here the color the width lab view is fairly flexible as far as that's concerned so I think that's going to be it for this video. Again, I haven't really made any other changes to this software. I plan on placing this up on GitHub. Again, this is the 32-bit version, so this is built with LabVIEW 2011. So as long as you're using the older 32-bit stuff, you should be all set. Just grab the EXE and copy it over the top of your old one, and you should be good to go. Well, that's going to be it for this video. We'll see you later.